you must ensure that the priesthood ministry of prayer never goes down. Amen. Write it down, please. The priesthood ministry of prayer. Notice, prayer does many things and prayer was allocated to achieve many things. The primary purpose of prayer is not just to receive things. The primary purpose of prayer is for your transformation. There is a dimension of prayer that is for receiving petitions. There is a dimension of prayer that is for warfare and intercession. Please hear me. If you lose the priesthood ministry of prayer at a territorial scale, I assure you, the power of darkness will ravage the land and destroy anything God. In the land of Babylon, there was only one request. One request. That because of the prayer of Daniel, the spirits of the Medes and the Persians could not penetrate to thwart the purposes of God. And so, Satan walked through the members of parliament to pass just one law. You would think they were just discussing. It was about attacking the priesthood of prayer. And they came up with a proposal. Let there be no prayer in the whole land of Babylon for just 30 days. That's only, that's how short Satan needs a land without prayer to wreak havoc. 30 days without priests who can pray. The priesthood ministry of prayer. The fire upon your altar, South Africa, must not go down. Amen. Please hear me. Prayer is not for prayer warriors. Prayer is for men. Amen. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray. If you do not pray, you cannot authorize the hand of God. To rest upon a land and birth his purposes. You have to understand the rules of engagement. God is almighty. But he, the earth has he given to the sons of men. The Bible tells us clearly that the whole world lies in wickedness. It is no news that the devil will want to wreck any family, any industry, any business, any church. If allowed. Are we blessed? Listen, you must never stop initiating prayer chains. You must never stop initiating prayer groups. There are some of you who God has anointed to be intercessors. Men and women, now is the time to put on your priestly regalia. A destiny is at stake. A generation is at stake. Oh, awake wailing women. Awake men and women who know how to hold on to the four horns of the altar. Preserve the next hundred years of South Africa now. Are we together? It says, give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem as a praise. Everything that happens physically is something that has been concluded in the realm of the spirit. The book of Job teaches us that. Nothing just happens. The ministry of prayer. Churches pray. Pastors pray. Don't just preach. Pray. 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 And fast. Pray. Not pray alone. Pray and fast. South Africa. Pray. And fast. These are the irrefutable keys that control the move of God. The keys that control revival. Prayer and fasting. It will never change. It has never changed. Pray in the morning. Pray in the afternoon. Pray in the evening. Pray all across South Africa. Let every home become a house of prayer. Pray with your children. Pray with your husband. Pray with your wife. Pray with your workers. Businesses pray, companies pray, industries pray, members of parliament pray. Listen to me. I charge every father here, 
You are not just a father because you provide bread. You are a father if you lead prayers. Not just participate in the prayers. Lead it. Show your children how to be a spiritual man. Listen. I look forward to times in South Africa where a family may be it's night time and they've gone to bed and they hear the voice of their father as the priest of the house from the living room to the kitchen and you open the door and lay hands on your children when they wake up you say no sleep I'm performing my priestly duty you sleep I'm awake for you let me see the devil that comes to destroy your children when you are a man of prayer. Let me see the devil that comes to destroy your business when you are a man of prayer. Instead of complaining, pray. Instead of complaining, pray. The same energy it takes to complain is the same energy it takes to pray. Can I tell you this? An attack on your prayer life is a real attack. Let me repeat South Africa. An attack on your prayer life is a real attack. Don't give excuses and say, I am busy. When you are sick and down, everything you are trying to do, you will not be able to do again. Don't let the devil destroy your territory. Let him know there are priests in South Africa. Fortify the spiritual borders of your territory. Be the watchman on the wall. Stand. He says, I have set watchmen. Every pastor here, you must get to a time where you lock the church and you are the only one there. I'm, hear what I'm telling you. I'm teaching you secrets in the kingdom. Lock your church and be the only one there. No usher, no protocol. Just you and God. Lord for your glory. Lord for your purposes. Can I tell you this? If you give your children a good degree and you don't give them God and transfer priesthood, you did not complete your investment in them. Don't just give them education. Give them spirituality. Don't just give them education. Give them spirituality. The priesthood ministry of prayer. We got into this work by prayer. We have been preserved by prayer. Please hear me. If you do not fast, you will remain weak. The good old school art of fasting has been the key to strength and stamina in the spirit. This kind goeth out not, but by prayer and fasting. There are issues that you need to confront with prayers and fasting. Fasting does not kill. Turn that plate upside down and come before God. Please sit down. This is supposed to be a charge. <laughs> Preserving the move of God. Pastors, let me give you an advice. Be careful with the deception of being busy in ministry. Be careful. When Sometimes when the devil wants to destroy you, he will allow so many invitations to come into your life. There is a skill to honoring so many invitations and still remaining on fire. I am busy and busy has destroyed many people. You must learn to wake up in the night. Use your nights. When people are asleep and there's no distraction, you wake up. You are hearing a report in your job that is not pleasing. Carry your CV and drop it on the ground. Someone tells you in the office over my dead body for you to rise. Don't fight him. Go back to your control room. Hear me. James 5.15 Please let's hurry up. We came to church this morning. 
James chapter 5 and verse 15. Hmm. <laughs> James 5 verse 13, I meant to say. 13. Please read. One, two, read. Is any among you afflicted? What is the cure? Let him pray. The moment you find out that there is any form of affliction, your first port of call is not to discuss and call people who cannot help you. There is a control room that we have. The advantage of priesthood. You can manipulate realities to be consistent with the word of God when you know to pray. How do you think we rise in this kingdom in the midst of wickedness? How do you think we rise? How are you going to call partners to your ministry, dear man of God? It won't be by giving invitations right from where you are. Your kingdom come, your will be done. And right now I pray those who have been called into the ministry of prophetic intercession, I stretch my hands over you. May that grace come upon you right now. May that grace come upon you. Deborah, arise. Elijah, arise. Men and women of power, some of you from this conference, you will start prayer groups, prayer chains, prayer chains across territories in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen to me. You are in ministry here. Please sit down. You are in ministry. Let me give you an advice. There are two departments you should supervise yourself. Number one is your worship team. Your worship team. You must put an eye on them by yourself. Because when the ministry of psalmistry dies in your ministry, you are in trouble. Number two, the prayer department. Every man of God must be a member of his prayer department. Whether you have the time to physically be there or not, you must connect in the spirit. Pray for me, pray for me will make you a weak man. You want to preserve? Listen, let me tell you this. Apostle Felix, Jesus is teaching and here's what he said. He said, when a spirit leaves a man, listen carefully, that that spirit goes through dry regions. Is it in your Bible? And he said, seeking for a place of refuge, you will find none. And he will say, I will go back. He's still calling that man my house. I will go back to my house. And he finds the house swept, clean, but empty. Now look up. Let me share with you a mystery. The demon did not just leave the man by default. It was casted out by an agency of God's power. Is that true? But it goes to the wilderness where there is no prayer warrior and no one to cast it. And yet it is uncomfortable there. What makes it uncomfortable? I found out that the desert is very hot. The heat there in the desert can make that demon uncomfortable. And without any man casting it, it will leave the desert and choose to come back to you. That means if your body can become like that desert, if that fire that burns within you, Shanakapakatos, if that fire that is in that temple can burn like the desert, every spirit, every curse, every charm, every yoke, every spell will let you go. Listen down. Jesus said, My house shall be called the house. Of prayer that house is not just a building you are that temple that house if you are not the house of prayer you will become a den of robbers so Satan will come to that house which is you since you are not a house of prayer he will steal your joy he will steal your faith he will steal everything he can steal <laughs> 